Good morning and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next half hour to soar through the skies of news like a triumphant deportation jet this morning. <laughs> you are with Talk TV, on TV, on radio, online and on your smart speaker. And coming up, lots of things today, well, especially... Uh, Rwanda. What was what that was again? What so was I, the, what, I, I what was write it? them down. I, I know, what was it? Read it again. Soaring through the skies of news like a fully loaded triumphant yeah. deportation yeah. jet. So basically, folks, she's got to come up with a new word of saying, we're going to uh, give you a lot of news very quickly, fast. She's got to come up with a new word every day. It's going to be really interesting within a week, if I've you ask me. I've doubled down on my challenge. I'm always going to try and make it connected to the top story as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, make it more difficult if you can. But uh, what a story our top story is. Yeah. Suella Braverman uh, said that she would comment soon uh, after her <laughs> dismissal. Uh, now, she wrote a letter that was she published yesterday on uh, social media. There, there it is. is. Is it a letter or is it a legal threat? Well, I'm not yeah, sure. It's 1,800 words long, which which must be the longest resignation letter ever. And by the way, Alex, it's not actually a resignation letter. Well, she, it's been called that, act. but she was fired. So this is basically a, a huge sort of warning to see... To, I did it again. Sushi. Oh, sushi. You've got to call him Stop sushi. Calling him sushi. I like no, it. No, it's a huge warning to Rishi, the Prime Minister, that he better <laughs> raise his game. She is going to be uh, not so much a thorn in his side as an Exocet missile in his side. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's been viewed 30 million times already. You've got other Conservative MPs, you know, backing it. Do you know what I'd say to those Conservative MPs? Backing it. I mean, they're just mealy mad. Do something. So uh, Suella, from the beginning, has stood up for her principles, mm. shown some conviction. Frankly speaking, and I'm going to get a little bit sexist here, quite frankly, it seems to me in the Conservative Party that the women have bigger cojones than the men. They just sit there, and the minute someone offers them a job to do, they're like, oh, OK, we'll agree to yeah. just be quiet for a while. The women are like, no. Well, yeah, I get that. Hellfire so, and brimstone. Do you want to tell the viewers what the story is, what she actually wrote in the letter? Go on. Well, basically, what <laughs> she has said is we had a deal, we shook hands and even had a paper yeah. document, apparently. Where is it? We want to see it. Show us the receipts, Suella. That they had a written deal that she backed him to become leader because, of course, there were all yeah. sorts of candidates standing, including Suella herself at one point, all that jiggery yeah. pokery and faction fighting and the numbers game. And she said, right, I'll back you yeah. if I'm Home Secretary and we do these things because yeah. this is what I need and want the Conservative party to do. This is what the country wants them to do. It all gets a bit technical. And what are these things? The, what are well, these things? You've got leaving the ECHR, and this exactly. is all about something called Rule 39 and preventing asylum seekers okay, from leave using, the ECHR. Leave uh, the ECHR. And then there's sort of the idea of using emergency legislation to stop asylum seekers from being able to appeal using the Human Rights Act. Yeah. Um, it all gets a bit legal and technical, well, frankly, and she, I can't sort of wrap my head around it. She said that he basically... Uh, she, he needed her support during the leadership battle. Yeah. She agreed to go with him, uh, and of course he then subsequently lost. However, uh, when he came to the fore again, uh, he needed her backing, yeah. and she says that he made uh, almost legally binding promises to yeah. her about what he'd do, Some and that he treaty. would, and that he would stop at nothing. To yep. Stop the boats, and, and he's she well says on the lot of it. Yeah, she That's says he's. She a, says. She's called him a, a weak leader, the wrong yeah. person at the wrong he says, time. Despite the fact that she had brilliant legal advice, saying this is what the government needs to do, this is how we get out of the ECHR, this is how we stop illegal entrants from essentially using taxpayers' money and legal aid to appeal being deported. She said this is the path we need to follow, but you gotta have the spine to do it. He's welshed on a lot of it, frankly. Mm. And then she said, "You didn't answer my calls. You didn't answer yes. my." Emails, so, didn't answer my text. He basically yeah. ghosted her, didn't he? Yeah, it's like, like, like a couple. Because she resorted to it's writing like, in the Times. Like Dear a, Rishi. They're like a romantic couple, you know. You didn't Consciously call, uncoupling. you didn't write. Didn't uh, write. But uh, she was furious with him. Uh, and she also says that his entire agenda mm. uh, has failed. You know, the, the Tories have lost these... Uh, and the these, timing. Uh, the... I mean, what timing? Because, of course, now we're going to find out if his agenda has failed. <laughs> Literally a day after that letter goes viral, any moment, really, we think at around 10 o'clock, so in just... Could be just earlier. Just under half an hour, could be earlier, we will find out if the Court of Appeal has said to the government... Or the Supreme that, Court. Supreme Court, yeah. The, the Supreme Court's basically said to the government, um, look, you're... you're 
you know, plan to send people to Rwanda is not legal. This isn't so much, this is about whether or not the ruling of the ruling is legal. Um, uh, you've got five judges sitting there and they're basically going to say, well, you know, picking through all the detail and the balance of legislation between the ECHR, UK legislation, what's allowed, what isn't. It all They'll gets ban very it. They'll ban it. They're left wing I like all gonna, the, all I, the I can't see it. I can't see it. You heard it, it here first, to be folks, honest. Uh, they and then will Suella not would just sit rule this there. scheme legal. So. Suella's going to be sitting there, isn't she? Just like, you is, know, it, what, is it five of them? The is it five Supreme judges? Court judges? It's five. Uh, is no, it? because when they're on television, about 20 turn up. I think it's a total oh, of about got, 15. If they're, oh, on telly, the sort of, if they're on telly, got, there's a full turnout. You've got the big ones. I don't you've... think this is on telly, so you probably get about the big two wigs, of them. The big wigs and the less They love wigs. to be on telly, Mini judges. Wigs. They love it. They, they do, love don't it. they? Uh, but the likelihood is, we don't know this, that no, they don't. will rule that the Rwanda scheme to fly migrants to East Africa is not legal. And ah. Therefore, that will plunge Rishi into a world of trouble. And one of the things that Suella said in her bombshell letter was, you have no plan B. Uh, uh, you've yeah. just tried to, she said, you tried to will this uh, Supreme Court decision through yeah. on what she called magical thinking. Yeah. Uh, and you hope wishy -washy -wishy. that you could still hang out in uh, polite dinner parties in North London. Well, you know, it's... Uh, but, but, but... Uh, she said, your magical thinking uh, will be in a world of trouble if they rule against it. You have no plan B. No plan B. And, you know, this is, it's even more interesting than that, because even if it does pass, you've then got a whole load of trapdoors in terms of whether people who are then put on the planes can then appeal under what's called a Rule 39 of the ECHR, which says, well, we'll be sent to Rwanda, but then Rwanda might send us back to the countries where we're afraid of being persecuted. And it all gets thorny and knotty. And, frankly, no-one knows what's going on. But if it doesn't pass, guess what? Apparently, they're going to go back to square one and and draw up yet another piece of legislation to try and make it work again. It's just going to be round and round in circles. And the people profiting from it, all of those immigration lawyers making all that money. Yeah, I mean, basically, Sunak has already made so many concessions that even if we do get the go-ahead for the Rwanda scheme, anybody... Any migrant put on that, no plane, on that well, plane, well, they'll be able. To, well, they'll be able to appeal, and it'll take a year yeah, to get. Just, so it madness. looks like it's a it's total mess. They uh, knew it was going to be. Meanwhile, bad news. More bad news for Rishi. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, an incredible poll has revealed that Reform UK has seen a staggering rise in the polls and is now on 11% support, and that's eight, only eight points below the Tories. Yeah, this is a, a people's poll done by uh, Matthew Goodwin, the eminent sophologist and political scientist yeah. and pollster, uh, looking at this huge flux. Because essentially, when you look at what happened in 2019, most people who backed Boris and wanted to get Brexit done did so on various different points, but mainly things like controlling our borders. And basically, the Conservative Party have failed at every single turn. I think the voters have been very patient. The Conservatives have had all this infighting, put a new leader and said, right, this is it, fresh start, this time we're going to get it right. Every single time, it just collapses. And I kind of think, you know, why would you believe them? Why do you think all of a sudden they're going to sort of grow a new skin and suddenly be capable of running the country? They can't even run their own party. Yeah, but you see, so... it's, it's like you, uh, Nigel Farage, Richard Tice, all the Reform UK people, uh, you know, I'm going to... Uh, Suppose that presuppose that I can tell you what you're thinking. Basically, what <laughs> I think Reform UK are is a party who, who is saying to traditional Tories, mm. let's face it, Sunak and the current Conservative government are not Conservative. We right. are. We this are. Is right. Thing. The Conservatives. Right. I find myself weirdly defending the Conservatives against uh, the party that I'm in. But um, the Conservatives would say we are a broad church. I would say you are a broad church, but with no religion. And frankly, all of those <laughs> Conservatives who are the ERG types, the Brothermans, it's all very well going. Oh, the party needs to change from the inside. That's like the argument of we must reform the UK from the inside. Why don't you leave that party and come to one that actually shares uh, your this ideologies? This has been a party political broadcast uh, on behalf no, of I the don't. Reform UK. Party. Hi, I'm just, Ofcom. I'm just, yeah, I'm sorry. just along for yeah, the ride. I, I, there are plenty I of the parties available. Labour's great, wearing Labour red. Yeah, love Be Tories quiet, too. Alex. Let's move on. Let's okay. talk about... <laughs> Right, inflation. Uh, this was a little bit of good news for Rishi. Explain. Oh. Yeah, so basically, inflation, in theory, has been halved. Or well, that's what Rishi Sunak would say, and he would say that he's done it all by himself. Well, it now, has been halved, this, doesn't it? In, in areas, it's not in you've, got theory, consumer, well, know, you've got different types no, of inflation. No, it has gone down. Your core Stop. inflation <laughs> of the consumer, consumer price index tells a slightly different story. Ah, and that is the Sorry, stuff the that Sorry, the party you're political broadcast is still going trolley. on. No, There's no good news for the Tories. But what's essentially happened is energy 
bills have dropped, which has uh, largely brought down overall inflation, but other things like general prices aren't necessarily So inflation falling. is down to 4.6%. Uh, well, OK, That's we'll just stick point, with that. Well, okay, inflation, is uh, inflation is down. Rishi, is down. Today, will, Rishi to today will be talking about that. He'll say, look, I told you I'd get inflation down. Look, it's working. Never mind the mm. other four promises he made yeah. that he's nowhere near fulfilling, but, you know, particularly the boats. But then with everything going on in the Middle East, energy prices are likely to go up again. So there Stop. you go. Stop. Raining on the poor uh, Rishi's uh, parade. Why Let's are you suddenly being the nice one in this well, operation? Because you're, you're, you're delivering a party political I'm not, broadcast. I'm very much Let's not. give him some good news. I'm Here we go. Here, Keir Starmer. Uh, he could be in trouble today uh, because the SNP are tabling a motion calling for a total ceasefire. That's in the House of Commons. Now, at least 12 of his shadow cabinet have promised to vote for that. And of course, mm. that uh, is in direct contradiction. That is in direct con uh, contradiction to uh, what Starmer has said, which is there should not be a ceasefire. Well, yeah, it's interesting. He's threatened to sack any uh, ministers, shadow ministers in the Labour Party who back the SNP amendment, but then cobbled together some sort of form of words of the Labour position, which pretty much sounds like the SNP amendment, to be fair. Uh, yeah, well, uh, except for it doesn't call for a total ceasefire. Oh, it he calls, is, for, it calls for a long-term to, humanitarian look, if, pause. It, it, well, if if uh, the the shadow cabinet members vote for the SNP amendment, which is calling for a total ceasefire, and we know that a lot of the sentiments of the Labour Party are with mm -hmm. a total ceasefire, if they vote for that, then Starmer has to fire them. He's told them they can't do it. He's said what he's going to do. Uh, so he this could it. be... An, it's going to be a very awkward day for Rishi, obviously, and not a great day for Keir Starmer. More turmoil in the Commons, eh? Mm, I think we can hear a little bit about uh, Sir Keir Starmer's very clear position on the lot of it. Uh, to say to Israel, whilst its citizens are still being held, um, you should have a ceasefire, in my view, is inconsistent with saying it's their right to try and get their hostages back. If hostages were taken from this country, uh, we would be doing everything we could to get them back, and we wouldn't take kindly to somebody saying, I'm afraid we don't think you should be doing that. Although he's still soft... Uh, he he's still soft hand shoe. to do the butt, then. He's still soft-shoe shuffling on that one yeah. right now. So uh, he, he doesn't want a ceasefire, but he wants a... Now he wants a long humanitarian... A very long report, humanitarian Which I think, course. like, you could translate as a ceasefire. Uh, let's talk about Harry and uh, Meghan Markle and the King. It was the King's 75th birthday last mm. night. Apparently he had a glittering party. Uh, and there seems to be some confusion as to whether or not Harry rang him from California to wish him a happy birthday. It was his 75th. Uh, so we're getting reports that, you know, first of all, Harry didn't ring. Then we found out he did ring, but uh, now the story seems to be that the king didn't pick up the phone. And uh, the reason for that is he's always hard to get hold of because, uh, by the way, uh, Your Majesty, it's 2023, he doesn't have a mobile does phone. Not? Apparently neither does Rishi Sunak. Uh, <laughs> I think he does. <laughs> but, um, but no, I mean, it's the ongoing uh, constant drama of that family fallout. And, and what I find so sort of weird about all of this is this need of the Montecitos, uh, the monarchs of Montecito, to constantly feed stuff into the press about, we are doing this, we aren't doing this, the invitation was sent, it wasn't sent, we are coming, we weren't invited, we wanted to come. But I mean, it's just, it's odd. Uh, well, it is, uh, but what I find really, really odd, this is one of these strange revelations uh, that come out of nowhere, is His Majesty the King, in 2023, does not have a mobile phone. I mean, that is sort of... Uh, you know, kind of wanton backwardness but he's technologically. The king. Does he need one? He's probably got, you know, yes, sort of I, I would contend a, court of, a, a court of hangers on who might have mobile phones. Of course and he needs just, a phone. You know, it's a, it's a, like saying, why pass him a Nokia on a fluffy pillow. Of course he needs a phone. You know, he's the, he's the monarch, he's the sovereign of this country. But have Come you on, seen, Charlie, have you seen get a phone. Have you seen the They're not very of, expensive. Come on, have you seen the size of those sausage fingers? Like that man can text. <laughs> that could be it. Right. He can't use the uh, dials. I think yeah, you're right. You've you hit go. upon it. That's the problem. Yeah. He can't find There's a, a phone <laughs> where the numbers are far enough apart so he can use his sausage Do you think once fingers? as a child he had to use one of those old-fashioned phones with those ring dials and his yeah. finger got stuck in there for about two days and yeah. then he's just had trauma ever since? What is it with those fingers? It's just... Uh, and in, I don't know. It's just I'm not a it, was, it was something he was born with, I, I, I gather. It's not, not, not necessarily a condition or anything, <laughs> but uh, he does have extraordinary fingers. Uh, so. Uh... <laughs> 
talking about conditions, a pretty horrific one is endometriosis, a condition that women suffer, not all women, but some women suffer when uh, bits of the womb start growing in all sorts of the wrong places and it causes immense pain yeah, yeah, and bleeding. Yeah. And um, there was a huge sort of, you know, fallout from the fact well, that... Well, yesterday, uh, a, a yeah, we are transphobic. We're yeah, trans we well. Because we uh, questioned whether or not a uh, trans woman Steph Richards should become the chief executive of an endometriosis charity because you have to have a womb to suffer from uh, endometriosis. She hasn't got one uh, because she's a trans woman. Uh, she's hit, she says that anybody complaining about this, and that would include me and uh, Alex, uh, we're transphobic. Uh, and uh, she has uh, tweeted on X, my birth sex doesn't come into it. Uh, why not? But also, Why doesn't does, her birth, does birth sex not come into endometriosis either, based yeah. upon that same logic? Because yeah, yeah. I think it does. I mean, look, no one's got a problem with uh, men being nurses, women being firefighters, all of these things. But Hang it on. does feel We're a bit We've got to go to the holding. Supreme Court. Supreme oh, Court. We're going there. What's going on in the world? We're going there. Uh, there it is. Uh, There's a man. Let's have a listen. Let's see what they're saying. The appeal raises points of law which are important not only in the law of the Cayman Islands but also in the UK and the wider common law world. The claimant, Primeo, operated as an investment fund set up by Bank Austria in which customers could invest. The first defendant, Bank of Bermuda, a member of the HSBC banking group, was appointed by Primeo as the administrator of the fund, and the second defendant, HSBC, was appointed by Primeo as custodian of the assets supposedly held in the fund. Primeo's funds were invested in... What the earth is he talking about? I think about? he's talking about offshore banking or something. I'm not... It's like some sort of Panama Papers inquiry. Did we get the right courtroom? I'm not even sure. We are expecting, of course, to be hearing uh, the Supreme Court make a ruling on the government's Rwanda policy. That is expected uh, in the next 15 minutes or so. It's going to be a critical ruling, isn't it? Because this is basically going to say to the government, you've got to go back to square one or off you go, put people on planes and send them to East Africa. Well, the way this bloke's going on, it doesn't look like we'll get the ruling until about seven o'clock tonight uh, but uh, we're hoping that they get their skates on and uh, they've said they're going to deliver this ruling around about 10 a.m uh let's hope they do but you know judges are notoriously long-winded they love to make these speeches that no one else can understand and uh you know our thanks to this guy for talking about the cayman isles and uh bermuda what is he all about crimea um something like that but i mean it is it is interesting i think it's it, it, not normally do we find ourselves watching a sort of dark courtroom with a man sitting on a, you know, Blofeld's chair, uh, rumbling off a load of Latin. But uh, we are expecting to hear something really quite seminal, I think, uh, in terms of what has been going on in UK politics. And the fallout, frankly, since Suella Braverman's uh, uh, sacking stroke resignation, all about whether wishy-washy-wishy -wishy was actually up for the job of doing what he said, which is stopping the boats. This has been basically the, the flagship policy of the government. The number one pledge that Rishi Sunak has made, uh, his Home Secretary saying, well, ex-Home Secretary saying, look, we signed a deal. You said you would do all of these things to make sure that policy went through. You didn't do them. You've welshed on it. Um, and now, basically, this is now going to come to the fore. Does his plan work or does it not? Did he do enough? Goes like this. Uh, we're hearing they're likely to rule uh, the Rwanda scheme illegal. So it is no exaggeration to say that the future the future of this government, the future of Rishi Sunak, uh, will pivot on what the Supreme Court announced in about 10 minutes' time. If the Rwanda scheme can go ahead, he will make hay while the sun shines. Uh, we will then discover, by the way, that probably the first migrant won't get on a plane for at least a year. However, if he gets the go-ahead, if officially the Supreme Court say, yeah, it's legal, he'll have a good day. Uh, if, as is more likely, they say it's not legal, he is in a world of trouble and Suella Braverman mm. uh, will have the time of her life today. Yeah, I mean, it gets very complicated in terms of... It's a legal argument, basically, and Suella has always maintained that there either has to be ignoring of the European Convention of Human 
human rights or basically leaving the ECHR, which will be a, a, a completely different process. But can we actually just ignore ECHR rulings? Uh, Suella saying that Sunak had agreed in a secret deal to do that when the ECHR challenged UK Gov positions, that he'd just go, no, we're going to do it anyway. She says he's been Welshing on it. He sort of has this view that, well, it's better not to leave it, but to reform it from the inside. And he wants to persuade the ECHR to drop this or, or, or to soften this thing called Rule 39, which is where they say, if someone turns around and says, my life's at risk, they can imminently step in to block activity. And what's happened with these asylum seekers is they're saying, well, you can't send us to Rwanda and we're saying, well, we can, your life's not at risk there. They would say, but Rwanda's then going to send us home and our life would be at risk. That's yeah. trying to sort of, you know, uh, yeah. Tracy in a nutshell. In a so nutshell. Doing, 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 doing my best. Doing my best. Seriously, uh, <laughs> what? Uh, Suella, one of the things that's enraged Suella Bravo, you know, and we saw her rage explode last night, is the way that Rishi Sunak has been wishy-washy about this. Mm -hmm. He told the nation, remember when he stood behind that lectern, stop the boats, yeah, saying, I will stop at nothing to stop the boats. She says he stopped at everything. Yeah. But actually, the Rwanda scheme, even if it gets the go-ahead, he has made so many concessions that it's going to be a paper tiger. It is not going to be able to do what it's supposed to do. Uh, they will not be able to immediately fly migrants to Rwanda because migrants are now able to appeal if it is decided they will go to Rwanda and once they appeal that'll take two years and of course we pay for the appeals because part That's of this, a very to good satisfy point. the ECHR one of the things we've got to do is provide them with legal aid so they come here illegally the taxpayer then has to pay for them to have the right to have a lawyer to argue that they didn't come here illegally um, and this can take years while we're also putting them up in hotels yeah, we're paying for their accommodation their food and we pay for their lawyers and their lawyers uh, they fight the government in order to keep these people that we want to deport yeah. in this country. And, uh, welcome to the mad merry-go-round of modern funny, Britain. Funnily enough, fun fact, if you would uh, care to receive one, is that part of the reason inflation has come down today is because the cost of hotel rooms has dropped by 9%. Uh, See how it all ties in. Well, there you go. Um, but, I mean, I kind of think the Rwanda plan was always a sort of, you know, a, a false flag in the first place. I knew this thing would never take off. I think it gives the government the excuse to point fingers at everyone else and say, we've done our best, it's them. It's the lefty judges, it is the immigration lawyers, it is the ECHR. And what Suella Braverman has rather done is blown the doors off that argument because what she has said in her letter is actually there are legal ways, but you didn't want to hear them, you didn't want to listen to them, and you didn't want to exercise and we them. We could just we, we could do one of two things. In fact, if you look at the tenets of the European Convention on Human Rights, the European Court of Human Rights is not allowed to rule against a democratic decision of a democratically elected elected government, in this case, Britain. It's not supposed to do that, and yet it did. Uh, so Braverman says, well, OK, uh, we can do one of two things. We could just ignore them and go ahead, like France and Germany. But that or, will France and Germany always ignore the ACA. Yeah. We don't. Uh, the other thing she says we do, let's just leave. And that's the option I would favour. Why don't we just leave? What is the big deal? I've got to get that through uh, Parliament, and that's always going to be difficult because the Conservatives' party is packed full of uh, softy Liberals. We all know that. Now, one of your favourite <laughs> words is uh, modelling, isn't it? I know you love modeling. a bit of modelling. You know, Kev loves to do a turn on the catwalk. Me and, me and Neil anything, Ferguson, we're always yeah. about our airfix kits. We're making spitfires. Yeah, everything. a lot of it. We love well, making models. Apparently, apparently, if the government are successful, and we're going to potentially find this out at, at 10 o'clock today, which is why the screen is showing yeah. um, a man this in man court talking about Latin. the Cayman Islands. Yeah. Um, uh, if if the government are successful, Home Office modelling suggests 4,000 uh, illegal migrants could be deported before the next election. Uh -huh. Really? Home Office really? modelling. Oh, you, yeah. you believe well, that? that won't yeah. happen because modelling is always wrong. Happen. Why do we put so much store I by modelling these days? It's always wrong. Well, that's okay. We've now got Estimate Bay, the Minister of Common Sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe she'll get rid us, of that nonsense. <laughs> to tell us that we shouldn't be listening to modelling after all. Yeah. But so I would imagine. Uh, again, we're, the, the clock is ticking. We're only yeah. seven minutes away, allegedly, uh, from this ruling. If it is ruled uh, illegal, uh, then Rishi will spend the day talking about inflation coming down. Won't he? <laughs> and uh, uh, Suella Bravan will be talking about, well, where's your plan B? 
Uh, and do you want to know what uh, Jacob Rees-Mogg has said? Because we always like the uh, minister for the, the 19th century, uh, with his wonderful, verbose way of words, giving us some sort of uh, ear delights in his opinions. Uh, he has said uh, about uh, the outgoing Home Secretary's letter, Suella Braverman's letter is excoriating. I've never seen anything like, and it's part of the sulphurous mood on the Tory back benches. Suella Braverman is right. The Prime Minister has repeatedly and manifestly not delivered on his promises. But I think actually the Conservative Party now shying away from the idea of sending uh, more and more letters to Sir well, Graham Brady well, sitting who, in his stationary cupboard, tremoring well, at the thought. Though? Who knows, though? I mean, they're calling themselves the new Conservatives. There are a few. It's, it's, it is extraordinary. I'll go give you a little story about what it's like to work on a programme like this. You hear all these stories going, yes, so we're four square behind uh, Suella Bravman, an insider said last night. So you phone all these, uh, you know, these tub thumping Jonah, stories. Come on. Jonah. Yeah, yeah, you say, come on, come on and talk about T it. Tell oh, the public. oh, I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that. In other words, they're very, very brave hiding behind an anonymous quote. They're brave in Try WhatsApp. and get them on the telly to say, I condemn Rishi Sunak and I back Suella yeah. Bravman. And suddenly they fade away. But the lot of them are venal, aren't they? A lot of them are super venal. They care more about where the government whips and, you know, those in and the corridors the way, of power. There. How many of them are there now? There, three? there, there should three? be five. I mean, There's five in total. There should be five. But maybe a couple of got they, they come by public transport, the bus was late or something like that, do you think? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it's like it's like some sort of strange version of Take That, isn't it? <laughs> well, a very strange <laughs> take version. That, of take that, government. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think that, I thought there was supposed to be like thirteen of them. Or no, it's, it's five in general. So five Supreme Court judges, the main ones who have uh, together made this decision. The decision we are due to hear at some point around ten o'clock, we think, and we'll let you know as soon as that happens. We'll stay live on it and uh, jump to it as soon as we think we're going to get some information. Um, this guy's still going around the globe, by the way. He's gone from uh, Cayman Islands to Bermuda. I think, he's on, he? I think he's on Canada now. Oh, is he? Do you think he's just uh, he's going telling Going across everybody... the north, he's going to hit Greenland, is... come round via Scandinavia, and will eventually, we're <laughs> promised, get back to Britain. I think he's just telling everybody about his uh, fun times on the Bibby Stockholm back in 1978 yeah. or something like that. <laughs> no, I, love, I love the way he is actually gloriously unaware that he's boring everyone to absolute tears. That's what. That's the thing about judges. They bore everyone to tears and they don't realise. They, this is his version of showbiz. That's the play of the courtroom, isn't yeah. it? You just, after a while of hearing the, the 25th recitation of some sort of Latin law, you've nodded off and you yeah, get Yeah, I think they should on. make this a bit more showbizy. So we're coming now three minutes to the... They should have, like, the countdown clock. <laughs> it's legal or it's not legal. And then sort of lots of ticker tape and... Glitter in the air, that kind of thing. Oh, Show like a, like a reveal up, you know. party, like give it a, give a, it a bit of glamour. And green for go. There's no glamour in this picture, is there? <laughs> but well, the, uh, we are the glamour. We're providing well, we're, the glamour we're right glamour, right so now cool. in the run-up. But run seriously, up to I mean, thing. again, to stress, we're being facetious now, which is uh, kind of uh, the, what way we I, do. Well, the way I am. Uh, but seriously, uh, this is a really, really serious decision, uh, and you will be receiving it extremely soon. Uh, Julia Hartley Brewer will take you through the morning. Uh, covering all angles of this. As I say, we are, we've been told that we're expecting them to rule the Rwanda scheme illegal, but who knows? It could go the other way. Uh, and on that decision, as I said, pivots really the very future of this government. Right, yeah, and a very difficult sort of second day in office for James Cleverley, who is the new Home Secretary, <laughs> who's going to have to suck, conjure up out of thin air another rabbit in a hat to solve the problem. Yeah. Um, and, of course, 